Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Looking at difficult words in the Bible, Dr. Michael Youssef. Beloved, this is an extremely sobering scene here. These people addressing Jesus as Lord, and yet he said, I never knew you. If that does not keep us alert and sober, I don't know what will. Jesus often spoke about his return, challenging listeners to remain busy and active until that day. In the pages of Matthew, Jesus teaches several end times parables. And that's where Dr. Yusuf takes you today in his series, Heaven Awaits, challenging you to prepare for the great and glorious day of Christ's return. This quick reminder, all of Dr. Yusuf's content is available online at ltw.org. You can also subscribe to the podcast or download the Leading the Way app. Now though, listen to this challenging message on Leading the Way with Dr. Michael Yusuf. Our Lord Jesus Christ tells us there's a great deal of difference between waiting and watching. In fact, He makes this very clear distinction between waiting and watching in both Matthew 24 and 25. It's known as the Olivet Discourse. In Matthew 25, He told them a parable about ten bridesmaids. Five of them were prepared. Five were not. And Jesus concluded the story with the words, therefore, Keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour. The ten bridesmaids represents all those who claim to be Christians. That's including you and me. But the point our Lord is making in Matthew 25 was this. Please listen. There were five professing Christians who were not prepared for His return, but there were five who were watching and preparing for His return. And Jesus said, only the Father knows that day. Only the Father knows the time of His return. Why did He say that? Because He said, when the door is shut, it's going to be permanently shut. There is no second chance. There is no second opportunity. All the chances are here. All the time is here. All the time is now. But the most devastating words of our Lord Jesus Christ to those church people, make no mistake about it, these were church people who were not prepared for His return. Most devastating five words, I think, in the whole of the Scripture for me. I do not know you. And he goes on to give a second parable. Matthew 25, beginning at verse 31. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in glory, and He sits on His glorious throne, He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. See, the goats here in this parable are the same as the five bridesmaids who are not watching and not preparing for His return who were Christians in name only. Those who had the lamps and the oil in the lamps ready, and those are sheep, and those who were not, they're the goats. They have symbols, but no substance. They had so much in common, and yet they were far apart. They were professing Jesus with their lips, but they were not professing Him with their lives. As a matter of fact, from a distance, you could not tell the difference between the ten bridesmaids. From a distance, you still can't tell the difference between the goats and the sheep. They all look alike. They have four legs. (laughs) It means that those who look like believers, but they are not, deep down, they are about self. Whatever God that can give me, whatever the church can give me, those who believed that Jesus is a Savior, and the difference is between them and the ones who believe that Jesus is the only Savior. Those who went to church, but their hearts were in the world system, and those who might have occupied pulpits, but yet preached false gospel and false message and false teaching. Please listen to me. Jesus spoke about sheep in many other parts of the Scripture. He says, my sheep, listen to my voice. 
I know them, and they know me, and they obey me. That's what another word for follow me. They obey me. They follow me. No matter how difficult the road may be, they obey me. No matter how false accusations leveled at them by the world, they are faithful to Jesus and His Word. They are not ashamed of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. They have no divided loyalty to the world and to Jesus, but only to Jesus. You notice Jesus never said, my goats know me. <laughs> never said that. Not anywhere in the Scripture. Well, my goats hear my voice. No. Why? Because the church goats, make no mistake about it, there are lots of goats in churches. The church goats are the ones who accommodate to the sexual revolution. The church goats are those who are non-discerning. One voice is good as the other. One religion is good as the other. All the roads lead to God. Sixty percent of church-going people in America believe that all the religions are going to lead to the same place. Sixty percent of people who go to churches. No, there's going to be a great separation. There's going to be a line drawn in the sand. Line drawn in the sand. The sheep to the right, the goats to the left. Oh, this question should haunt everyone at the sound of my voice. Am I a sheep or am I a goat? Am I a bridesmaid with oil in my lamp and ready any time, even if it's the nighttime and I'm as physically asleep? Or have I deceived myself into thinking all the ways will lead to God? All the ways lead to heaven. That is the most important decision you can make in life. There is no one even close to it. Why? Because Jesus said in Matthew 24, 42, Therefore watch, therefore watch, because you do not know what hour the Lord will come. Then Jesus goes on to explain this parable by saying that His return will be like a thief in the night. I've said this many times before. In the Middle East, most of the stealing takes place at night when people are dead tired and asleep. During the day, somebody's in the house. And that is why they understood where the thief in the night comes in and what damage the thief in the night can create. Those who are totally unprepared, those who are unexpecting, those who are spiritually asleep, not physically, but spiritually asleep, they will not only be surprised, they're going to be devastated. Paul picks up the same theme, obviously, read the gospel accounts, read the gospel, uh, learned from the other disciples what Jesus taught. And so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, he says the same thing, for we know very well that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. But then he continued, he said, the night life of those who are not prepared or even expecting his return. Look at verse 4. 1 Thessalonians 5, but you, brothers and sisters, you, brothers and sisters, you are not in darkness, talking about spiritually, not the physical darkness. You're not in darkness, so this day should not surprise you like a thief. It shouldn't surprise us. We should waiting. We are watching. We're working. We're doing. We're serving. We're giving. We're doing all this with the eyes are waiting for His return. Then he continues. Paul says, we don't belong to the night or to the darkness. Imagine the shock of those folks who thought that Jesus is a milk toast Jesus, that Jesus is a weak and mild, or that Jesus, or oh, he's accommodating to all sinfulness and sinful desires, any worldly lifestyle Jesus is good with. The Jesus who acquiesces to the rewriting of His Word, the Jesus who never draws line in the sand, separating the goats from the sheep. I can imagine their horror when they see Jesus as the judge, as the judge. Listen to what Jesus said in John's Gospel. I'm going to throw a lot of references, but please, if you're taking notes, write them. 
And the only reason I'm doing this, I'm showing you that the Scripture is consistent. Whether it is Paul, whether it is John, and whether it is the Lord Jesus Himself, the Word of God is a consistent Word of God. And so in John chapter 5, beginning at verse 22, here's what our Lord Jesus said, The Father judges no one, but He entrusts the judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son as they honor the Father. Beloved, please listen to me. This is the first time our Lord Jesus Christ, during His earthly ministry, that He refers to Himself as the judge and the king. During His earthly life, the Son of Man lived in humility, but one day He will return to rule with an iron scepter. The one who died on that cross, helpless in humility, is no other than the King of heaven and the judge of the earth. And that is why the Apostle Paul again picks up the same theme again. In Acts chapter 17, he could say in Mars Hill to the Athenians, he says, the time of ignorance God has overlooked, but now He commands everyone everywhere, not just the ones in the West, not just the ones in the East, but everyone everywhere in the world to repent. Why? Because He will judge the world. He will judge the world. Those who always want to focus on the love of God and ignore the justice of God, they're going to be in for a world of hurt. And as a proof for His judgeship, as a proof for His judgeship, He raised Him from the dead. There's something else about the return of the Lord I don't want you to miss. In Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 and 12, Then I saw a great white throne, and Him who seated on it. Earth and sky fled from His presence, and there was no place for them. Verse 12, Then I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. I think each one of us have a book. I know mine probably is very thick, because I've been forgiven much. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. You know, the first time we read about the book of life is in Psalm 69. Psalm 69. There David cries out to the Lord. (laughs) He was drowning in a sea of trouble, and his enemies arrayed against him. And he begs God to take up his case (laughs) to defend him (laughs) against his foes. So he writes of his enemies. (laughs) He said, Charge them with crime upon crime. Don't let them share in your salvation. When you can tell David is ticked off. (laughs) Man, he said, may they be blotted out of your book of life. That's the first time we hear about the book of life. And not be listed with the righteous. I said he's really ticked off about this group of people. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 3, Paul commends Clement and the rest of his fellow workers. He said, those whose names are in the book of life. In the book of Revelation, the book of life is mentioned six times. Or listen to how our Lord Jesus Christ Himself described this scene. In Matthew 7, 22 and 23, here's our Lord Jesus described this scene. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not we prophesy in Your name? And in your name we drove our demons, and in your name performed many miracles. Then I will say to them plainly, I never knew you. In Luke chapter 6, verse 46, Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? When you go directly against my word? when you want to follow your whims and your desires, when you want to follow the current of culture. Beloved, this is an extremely sobering scene here. These people addressing Jesus as Lord, and yet He said, I never knew you. If that does not keep us alert and sober, I don't know what will. If that does not warn us against false teachers and false preachers, I don't know what will. If that does not cause us to never compromise His Word, I don't know what will. 
if this does not warn us to always examine our motives in serving, I don't know what will. I can picture what our Lord Jesus is saying here in this passage about what will happen on that great day. They will say, Lord, we went to church on occasions. Lord, you know, we will have membership in the local church. Your name is not written in the book of life. Lord, I've done so many good works. Lord, I was a good and a nice person. Your name is not written in the book of life. Lord, I admired Jesus, and I even wanted other people to admire him too. Lord, I pastored the mega church. I had many followers. Your name is not written in the book of life. What a tragic day it will be for countless people who never gave a thought to their eternity. Countless people who assumed that they're good enough for God. Countless people who thought that they're doing God a favor when they are bringing doubt in people's minds and hearts about parts of the Scripture. They really do. They think they're doing people a favor. They say, that's the only way you can reach the next generation. Countless people who thought they've done their bit, uh, rushing in and out of church on occasions. Countless people who celebrate the birth of Christ every Christmas. Countless people who are goats, but they're hidden among the sheep. Countless people who deceived themselves into thinking they were sheep when they were goats all along. Only you know in your heart. Only you know. By contrast, those who have confessed and repented of their sins, those who have acknowledged their sin and their desperation apart from God, those who have gratefully and thankfully accepted Jesus' payment on the cross to be for them, those who daily grow in intimacy with Christ, those who sought to obey all of His Word. How many of those? All of His Word, day in and day out. They will inherit the joy in the presence of God. Let me tell you, the contrast between heaven and hell could not be could not be, could not be, could not be more stark. Please listen to me. The time to prepare for that great day is now. Amen. Listen to what Jesus said in Mark chapter 13, verses 35 to 37. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether it is in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn, if he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping, spiritually speaking. And what I say to you, Jesus said, I say to everyone, everyone, in every generation, at all times. You know, and I know, there are genuine believers and there are cultural Christians. There are sheep and there are goats. And in the last message, we saw some of the most obvious marks of the genuine believers, the ones who submit to the will of God and submit to the Word of God, those whose personal relationship with Jesus and His Word is central in their life, not in the peripheries of their life. So ask yourself, where do I stand? Where do I stand? Where do I stand? Ask yourself, is my name written in the book of life? The Bible gives us absolute assurance that you can know here and now that your name is written in the book of life. You wake me in the middle of the night, put a gun to my head, I know my name is written in the book of life. Because Jesus said so. Nothing to do with me. Ask yourself, do you live day in and day out in obedience Obedience that comes out of gratitude, out of thankfulness for being eternally saved, for being eternally loved by God. Only you can answer that. And if you read my book of the near, you know that Jesus talks about the birth pang 
before the baby is born. All the things that actually He gives us, they are really happening all the years, for thousands of years. Earthquakes, wars, and rumors of wars, and all that. All these things have been happening, but we said to the believers, to those who are prepared, it's not going to be a thief in the night, but it's going to be labor, labor pain. And I explain all those six labor pains that we are watching right now, and as you all know, labor pains get increased in the intensity. They increase in shorter and shorter intervals. And so when you're constantly seeing earthquakes literally coming every week or every few days, and you see wars and rumors of wars not like another other time before, you know that the labor pain it's really begun. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, all the way to verse 5, there will be terrible times in the last days. Can you imagine more terrible times than we are facing right now. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having the form of godliness, but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. End of court. One of the great distinctions between the true believers and those who look alike, the difference between sheep and goats. The difference between the prepared maids with oil in their lamps, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, and those who don't. The difference is great. The believers and the lovers of the Lord Jesus, whose names are written in the book of life, is the person who conducts his or her life with heaven in mind. Listen, if I sought to do anything during the series of messages. If I sought with all my heart to do anything, it's to communicate a sense of urgency, urgency to conduct our lives with eternity in mind. A challenge to live life with eternity in mind. Thanks for listening to this episode of Leading the Way Audio. If you'd like to dig deeper into what this means for you, consider talking with a Leading the Way pastor or counsellor. Start your conversation by filling out a short form at ltw.org slash Jesus. Visit ltw.org today to grow in your relationship with Christ. God is the one who always reaching out to us. God is the one who always wants to bless us. God is the one who always trying to pursue us. Strengthen your faith as you watch, listen to, and read sound biblical teachings from Dr. Michael Youssef. New programs and articles are posted daily. Receive encouragement as you hear miraculous stories of God moving here at home and around the world. Take a quick break and receive spiritual refreshment as you read one of Dr. Youssef's daily e-devotionals. Everything on ltw.org can be easily shared through email or your favorite social media platform, making it easier than ever to tell others about Christ. Visit ltw.org today. Be encouraged and join our global gospel movement. You can always reach out to Dr. Yusuf and the Leading the Way team through the post at Leading the Way, P.O. Box 1900, Penrith, New South Wales, 2751. Leading the Way, P.O. Box 1900, Penrith, New South Wales, 2751. And that number to speak with a ministry representative at Leading the Way's call centre is 1300-133-589. And of course, ltw.org. Well, as we close out today's episode, I've got just enough time to invite you to join Dr. Yusuf for the next Leading the Way when he wraps up the life-changing series, Heaven Awaits. This program is furnished by Leading the Way with Dr. Michael Yusuf. Connect with Leading the Way through audio, video, YouTube, Facebook, X, previously called Twitter, and other social media networks you engage with. Learn more at ltw.org. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.